Uh, welcome back to the First Reviews podcast. Stefano here with Ben. Ben, how are you doing today? Not bad, Stefano. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, we are chatting The Boys Season 4. We were able to watch this early and we will be chatting the first couple episodes. First three episodes drop this, I think it's Thursday. Is it Thursday? The Yeah, or when, yeah something like that. Uh, whatever whatever the, the 12th, 13th. I think, I, think the, I think the first one I was looking at IMDb and it showed that it was the 12th and the other two were the 13th. So I don't know if they're doing one. Oh, that's order. interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. And then it's weekly after that. Yes. Yeah. Season picks up very quickly. It starts off with the uh, the team on a, on their on a mission. It, I think it's six months. They said something about six months later. Um, and it's uh, Victoria Newman's campaign. Um so she's on she's on her campaign trail, and the team is on a mission to infiltrate this uh, this campaign. And um, Newman, we saw Newman the last time we saw Newman, she was in uh, Gen V. Did you watch Gen V? I did. I really enjoyed Gen V, actually. Yeah. Mentally, I'm trying not to think of the whole show overall. I'm trying to that's think what... of just the first the first <laughs> the first couple that's episodes. Right now. Stopped, that's part of why I stopped that yeah. before we had this talk about the first year. I was like, I'm gonna. I'm going to accidentally spoil stuff from further yeah. on. So I was like, all right, I, I hit five. I was like, I'm going to pause it for now. We'll chat about the first three. Yeah. <laughs> I made notes. I made notes <laughs> of like key moments that happened in each episode just so that I don't get too lost. <laughs> That's um, good. I'll follow your lead so we don't uh, yeah. we don't spoil any uh, any future episodes for, yeah. uh, for anybody watching. If we could start off with the the new characters. Uh, there's some new characters that get introduced this season. Uh, you mentioned Firecracker. You mentioned Sister Sage. And Kessler is another one who's played by Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He's in, he's in. Oh uh, yes. Yeah. 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 He's in um, the walking dead too. He's uh yes. Yeah. Uh, so we get introduced to those three, three new characters uh, this season. Kessler is, I don't think they really give away too much in the first couple episodes about who he is. You get an understanding that he, he knows butcher from the past and, uh, he knows a lot about everything going on, so uh, he's trying to sway Butcher in a in a certain direction to really push him, um, especially since the boys um, have kind, kind of, of pushed Butcher kind away. Of cut ties with him and pushing him away. Yeah, um, I really should have watched the the season finale because it like a year in between each season is way too long. This is actually so I looked at I, this has been two years. Has it been two years? It was, yeah, it was summer. It doesn't feel that long. I was like, oh, the boys, you know, they pump out their seasons a little bit quicker than anybody else. But it was, it was, uh, it premiered, premiered June of 2022 was wow. last season. It ended in, I think it ended July. I guess so it's, it's just, been, it's been like two years. Yeah, I guess just because we got Gen V then. It feels like a little bit shorter of a gap. Yeah. Yeah, that must be it. And uh, then Firecracker and Sister Sage. Are two other new characters, uh, Sister Sage. When we first get introduced to her, uh, I think they, are, if I'm not mistaken, they introduce them at the end of the episode, as the team is doing like a um, a roll call and they're trying to like refill the the roster because they're at this point they're only like four. There's only like four members of of the seven. And well, we also got um, a, a new Black Noir as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that they didn't really, they didn't say much uh, right away as to, you know, who this person was. I figured, you know, maybe they just, they didn't want to give away that Black Noir was dead uh, because Homelander killed him, obviously, in the season finale. Oh, yeah, because they showed that. They showed that in the in the season recap. Mm-hmm. And then I like, I kind of like the way they did it because he's just, he's just there at first. And you're like, oh, okay. It, I guess he, he didn't die you know soups okay guess he recovered um but i i like the i like the the reveal later on in that first episode <laughs> i like that he's just kind of unsure of the the shoes that he's kind of stepped into what yeah. his role uh yeah. as a member of the seven is and he's asking for all of this direction constantly <laughs> and he's constantly talking and they've got homelander like you don't talk just shut up <laughs> yeah 
he comes off as like an actor trying to fill the role. Kind of, kind of yeah. It's like yeah. a character actor trying like to get character into, actor. into Black Noir's head. <laughs> Tell me about Black Noir. What kind of what, what kind of man is he? And then yeah. I think the deep is like he doesn't talk, man. Just shut up. <laughs> I'm loving all of the new characters so far. Uh, again, I haven't watched far enough to really like. There's only been a little bit of of Kessler, Je- Jeopardy, and Morgan's character. Um, but Sister Sage is awesome. I like how she's, you can tell right away um, because her power is just being, you know, the smartest person in the world. Uh, you can see the, the gears turning. You can see the way she's planning for the future and like manipulating people and, you know, kind of working towards her own agenda. Yeah. Uh, Sister Sage is definitely um, someone that can throw a wrench in any plan. Uh, Cause she seems like she's always 10 steps ahead of everybody or can be at least definitely different than a lot of soups that we've had in the seven, because most of them have just had like super strength and, and you know, that kind of thing. Even like, even the deep is really underused for the most part. Uh, he just mostly uses his strength. We don't really see him uh, use much aquatic ability other than like talking to animals. Yeah, they like the. I think the last time we saw him use it was there was that there was that bit. I think it was season two with the whale. Um, whale, that's right. <laughs> like, yeah, they all got like covered in in whale guts. Um, but yeah, like it, it's interesting because they've always all had some sort of physical super ability, and now you've had you have Sister Sage, and it's just she's she's smart. It's her her mental abilities that that bring this interesting new dynamic to the seven. Yeah, exactly. Even Firecracker, because she doesn't she doesn't seem. I even questioned does she even have abilities because I didn't I didn't see her actively use anything other than, you know, just similar to Sister Sage, just vo- being so outspoken and vocal. Um, you know, she has a podcast. So I didn't re- I didn't know if they just brought her on as a seven, just as a seven member, just because she she has, you know, a fan base and she can get yeah. like, uh, you know, a following. Um, but her name was Firecracker. So I figured maybe she, it's something similar to uh, Starlight. I've only you only really see like I, I can't remember if it's the first or second episode, but Sister Sage, when they meet at the uh, the conspiracy convention, she's like, I, I want to see your powers. And all she does is she snaps she just, her finger and it's it. a little spark. And she's like, oh, I was underwhelmed. That's it. Yeah. And you really you really don't see anything other than that. Yeah, exactly. I figure like she looked similar to like a Jubilee kind of character, just like yeah. sparkles. Homelander's currently on trial for murder and. Newman doesn't want him there. One of the big action sequence that we had in that episode was with Victoria Newman's daughter. Oh yeah, yeah. The uh, the like the snake, almost like almost like Medusa. Yeah, it's like a Medusa. Yeah. I thought that too. Yeah, I thought that. Yeah. Too, yeah. <laughs> um, and Homelander has a has a moment where he's ranting about. Uh, about the murder trial and i always love the show the way they phrase certain things the the um the writing is just makes me laugh um homelander used terminology to refer to the guy that he murdered as um that he threw a projectile at uh ryan (laughs) 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 and he referred to him as a uh a pedophile Uh, (laughs) and it's just all of these terms that they use to try to poke it make an enemy out of someone oh of course like they're they're yeah it's it, they're weaponizing their words to make you know the victim in this situation seem seem like they've done something you know that that made them deserve to die starlight is now running the starlight found her starlight foundation as a uh, protest uh movement against soups against the seven against homelander biggest the biggest movement against homelander's uh trial and he, the, the few times that we see him uh going to the courthouse the starlight uh the starlighters are uh actively protesting against uh homelander so it's uh it's interesting to see those dynamics uh the the homelander uh fan base against the starlighters even on his trial, which which happens towards the end of the episode. Each of the four members of the team have uh, a little bit of a, a story development in the in the first episode. Huey with his dad, and then his mom shows up uh, towards the end of the episode. We have never seen Huey's mom before. And then the dad 
uh, he's in a coma, correct? Yeah, he went into a coma. Yeah, you, yeah. you have that. I think it's like close to the beginning of episode one. He, he's got a missed call for, or he calls him and he ignores it. And then like later in the episode, he finds out that all oh, he, he, you know, he does get a stroke. He's in the hospital. Yeah. He, yeah. And I believe the episode ends with Huey turning around and seeing his mom at the door. I think that's the yeah. She's, she says something. I can't remember what she says, but she says something. I don't think you see her face in that first episode. And then it, he turns around and it's his mom. And then it, mm-hmm. it kind of adds down a nice little cliffhanger. Yeah. Uh, Frenchie is starting a relationship with a, a guy named Colin who works at the Starlight Foundation. Um, and they met through, I think, Narcotics Anonymous. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I, this is, a, I, again, I feel like, you know, I... I love uh, with the actor's name, Tomer, Tomer Capone. Like, I love him. I love the character Frenchie. I felt like with that, with last season and with this season, like, he's a really interesting character. I don't think he's given n- enough time for his stories to play out because they throw us into that new relationship, like, really quickly. And it's like, I yeah. would have liked to see, I would have liked to see more of that development leading up to where it eventually ends up going. Um and it felt kind of the same with last season too, with all of the, I think it's like the rough Russian mafia and like the fact that he used to work for them. And I wish he was given a little bit more to do and a little bit more of that backstory that we got to explore. Cause I, I think he's a really interesting character. Yeah. I really like him. I like him as an actor. I love his character. Uh, his character always makes me laugh. The, his dialogue is always really well done. <laughs> um, I, I agree that I think he is very limited um it, this screen time i think right now the show the shows are an hour long because there are just so many characters to balance um they've introduced they have yeah them. they have a lot they have a lot going on at once so it's i mean i guess somebody has to get kind of the short end of the stick there it's just a shame that it was it was i felt like it was him last season and it feels like it's kind of him this season again at least yeah. so far yeah so now with butcher kind of pushed to the sidelines uh from the team Mother's Milk has taken over as as team lead, um, and they're working with the the CIA. Uh, they were recruited last at the end of the last season. So you've got the uh, Sister Sage's plan uh, where they uh, the, where they murder the three Homeland supporters with the baseball bat. That all that, happened, was- that happened in the first episode. Holy, I, th- I think so. Oh, that's right. Because then that's the trial. Yeah, that's the trial. So they go, um, Sister Stage shows up dressed as a uh, Starlight supporter. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when it's revealed that he's innocent, she throws the, it's like coffee or something like that at, at one of the uh, one of the other uh, home Homeland supporters. And she's like, oh, you fascist. And then that starts the riot. Yeah. And then that's when they, they bring the bodies there. Uh, a really smart plan on, on her side, because that kind of like sets up this heated battle between these two sides for the remainder of the season. That's right. Uh, because it looks like these these supporters were this homeland supporters were killed during the riots by people on Starlight side. That's right. Absolutely. Oh yes, I'm I'm forgetting that uh the story that the storyline that they wrote for um for Mother's Milk is that uh he is trying to find his wife's ex-husband and he is one of the guys of that one of the three guys. Yeah. yeah, gets killed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so they they saw her. They saw sorry the three guys with Sister Sage, but they didn't. They don't know who Sister Sage is at this point. No, exactly. I don't think it's a, until the second episode that they start to put those pieces together and and you know clue into oh you know something's going on here. They weren't really killed there. Uh, you know the, how were their bodies at this location? But they were seen elsewhere, like you know less than an hour before. Uh, I thought that was a really interesting plan. Just on a weird side note, too, it's been so long since the last season that I'm like, I'm staring at Mother's Milk. That you know, this this episode, I'm like, he looks different. This actor looks different. Like, did he lose weight? No, he had a. He's always had a, a beard until the se- season, and he's fresh shaven. Really? Now. I'm like, did he lose weight or something? I I I I said I said to Diana while we were watching, I'm like, Mother's Milk looks good. He looks like he lost a lot of weight. Yeah, I'm like, oh my, he looks great. He looks younger. Like. <laughs> No, he just he's shaved. Really? I didn't yeah. even look at pictures. Oh, wow. That's so funny. That's hilarious. Oh, my God. So episode two starts off with a really funny intro scene to the A-Train movie. Oh, my God. One of the best cameos. that th- This show has had some good cameos before, but this has got to be one of my favorites. Yeah. It's so funny to see, see Will Ferrell uh, 
It reminded me of that commercial that he made with Drake when he was trying to be the coach of the Raptors. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Training A-Train. Training A-Train. <laughs> so you've got, yeah, Will Ferrell trying to do his, like, his Oscar, Oscar push performance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was good. I like, I like how meta, the show's always been quite meta, but, like, I like, especially the last couple seasons that they're like really getting into poking fun at like other more so like not just politics, like other media. And like, there's something I can't remember if it, it might be after episode three, but there's a bit where they really poke fun at like the whole MCU and their, their slate for like the new phases. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I just like that. They, they have a lot of fun kind of making fun of their own genre mm -hmm. and making fun of like movie making and filmmaking as well. Exactly. When they have the that uh, the director for the director for the A Train movie, uh, he was the the director for the um, the Seven as well. Yeah, Dawn, Dawn of the Seven. Dawn yeah. of the Seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah, I love that element to the uh, the marketing that they do. Um, even like I I have a lot of fun even just looking in the in the background because there's so many little Easter eggs everywhere, little posters. Um, like even in the hospital where Huey's dad uh, was um, when he was, when he was in a coma uh, outside the room, they had um, a poster for get well, uh, gets have a speedy recovery. And it was a train running. <laughs> yeah. The produ production design and like all the little details. And this has got to, got to be one of the best produced shows on TV right now. They put a lot of care into every element from the visual effects to the backgrounds, to the set design, to all these little meta moments. Like even the, they've done a lot like this season where it's following the trial and everything. And you'll see little like snippets from like a television channel airing. And it's like somebody like flipping through like different commercials and you've got commercials for like, uh, pieces of like the sevens media and like other other soup related stuff and just like regular commercials and it's true they have so much they have so much going on with with, yeah. with every with every element in this episode ryan is beginning his hero journey they're they're starting the marketing campaign for ryan as a solo hero uh with his new suit marketing him at, i think his name is uh, homeboy 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're planning like uh his first save it's going to be a staged save just like everybody else's saves that we know uh are not not real everything is just staged um that uh goes terribly south <laughs> <laughs> Very terribly south. oh man I, I, I like I, how they set that up too you see them doing the the dry run and the uh you know, kind of the, the the stunt choreography and everything for it and the blocking. And, you know, the stunt man says to him, he's like, on oh, the real, you know, when it comes time to it, you're really going to throw me. I, I can take it. I can take it. Yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, and obviously Homelander messed that up completely because um, you kind of get like a, a, a glimpse that he has a little bit of jealousy towards Ryan right there as they're marketing him he, he wants to be always the main character and as soon as they see ryan uh he has this like you can see that's why he just jumped he jumped in when he wasn't supposed to because he wanted to be in the mix of course uh, he's he's got such a big ego and he always has to be in the spotlight and the center of attention and you know he's got his son's all of a sudden getting this attention he's like oh i i want i want a piece of this this yeah. isn't right <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Later on, we get a um, firecracker at a kind of like a, a rally. Uh, we get a first glimpse of her as like the major podcaster uh, for this like alt-right. Uh, very... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a very like, it's a very politically pointed show. And yeah. I like how they've kind of taken that and put it into like the, the comic book superhero genre. And they, they've always done it very smart. It's very tongue in cheek. It's not, it's not subtle, but they do such a good job at poking fun of, you know, politics and American yeah. culture. And like, yeah, they turned her into like this Alex Jones character. Well, you've got all this stuff too. in that, I don't know if it's, I, I think it's the second episode where she's talking about like Tom Hanks She's like, oh, Tom That's Hanks, right. if, you add up, if you add up all of his movies, 
three three one and that's yeah, the yeah, code yeah, yeah. for child <laughs> trafficking. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny yeah and and honestly those are things that are in the conspiracy world are that's what i mean actual like, conversations they, they're taking, yeah they're taking real world like just crackpot conspiracies and then you you see this kind of culture that that buys into this so uh <laughs> it gives us a really dirty scene um <laughs> it's the first dirty scene of the season and yeah. it's this sa- the sauna scene. Oh God! Just the the, <laughs> the sound design there. They went real hard with that slurping and gurgling sounds. It was. I mean, this show at, at this point, like, there's. I feel like I don't think it can surprise me anymore with like some of the stuff, especially like what we've seen in like Gen V and like some of the stuff we saw in last season of The Boys. I'm like, okay, there's nothing, there's no room left for surprises. But then you see something like this and you're like, oh, that's disgusting. They, they, they're not afraid to go there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that, that's, I, that, <laughs> I mean, it got me. I, I was just mostly just because they're so, I guess they just, uh, it comes, pops out of nowhere. You're not expecting it. That's their, the way they get you now. Um, yeah. Uh, otherwise, like, no, like anticipating really dirty, or raunchy scenes is not unexpected. Uh, it's just when is it going to pop in, pop out? And it it that one caught me by <laughs> surprise. Yeah, sure. that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's not the last that we see of of that character. We get a a, a fun little uh, action sequence towards yeah. the end of the episode. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he's like a multiplier, and he multiplies. He doesn't have clothes, um, so it may it kind of makes sense. But you end up with a. a a bunch of naked guys everywhere a bunch of naked clones <laughs> a bunch of naked clones <laughs> yeah that uh that actor um i don't remember his name but he's another um veteran from supernatural oh really okay so they're like they're really pulling like with last season they are. Too, with uh with soldier boy yeah he yeah. he actually plays god in uh in, oh, okay <laughs> yeah in, in supernatural it's pretty funny a train gives the team the cam footage um the start I really like footage. I really like this arc for A Train. I feel like he's not that he's been sidelined um since season one, but I feel like he's been more of a supporting player. And I think like they've been looking for something to do with his character. And I like that we could be, you know, leading to somewhat of a like a redemption arc for him for like all the terrible things that he's done and how, how he's assisted Homelander and uh, what happened to Huey's uh, girlfriend in the in the series premiere? So it's uh, it's interesting to see this side of him where he's realizing that you know I'm a pretty awful person. I've done some pretty awful awful things. Like how can I make this right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think a lot of it stems to uh, if you go back if we go back to the episode one uh, of this season, um, the scene where they're trying to recruit uh, new members and. They're all three of them, the deep A train and uh Black Noir, they don't know how to respond to Homelander. And Homelander only said he wanted to recruit new members because they don't um argue enough with him, they don't push him enough. They're all afraid. Yeah, they, don't of him. Have, they don't have a backbone, like he, no backbone. he almost makes the you know, he almost makes the deep. <laughs> Uh, do something to uh, is that oh uh, yeah it's a train yeah and it, and the deep just goes ahead with it yeah yeah he, like goes along with it he's like okay and then afterwards he stands up he's like oh, I wasn't really gonna do it yeah so it's yeah, like, exactly. no, like these people are like they're they're kind of pushovers yes. and they've always been pushovers and I think Homelander wants somebody to challenge him but on the other hand he's so full of himself that I don't think he handles it very well which we see a little bit of of later in the season as well yeah they're all they're all aware of how dangerous Homelander is. And I'm happy that uh, a train is slowly starting to realize that he basically needs out. So this is a stepping stone for him, a, a real big move on his part, a uh, dangerous one, but definitely a move that I, I feel like he needed to make because they realize that they're expendable after, you know, everything that happened with like Maeve and Black Noir, like Black Noir is just a replacement. They know he's not even the real Black Noir. So I'm happy that they are giving A-Train an actual storyline because I agree that like he's just been sidelined. The end of the, at that big fight uh, with all the multiples, uh, Butcher jumps in and, uh, and he saves them as well. Um, 
And I didn't know, like, I, I don't know if I missed something from the finale. I, or I, I just don't remember, but I don't remember Butcher um, having a, um, an issue. Did I forget that? It was like a him being like him dying. Him dying, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was it was because of all his uh, all of his V abuse. All of the uh, V. Last, I figured last season that it, it caught up with him, and the doctor said like you're you, you know you got like six months to a year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I completely forgot about that until I watched the recap. So yeah. I'm glad because, <laughs> again it's been so long that I'm like I'm glad I, I'm glad I watched that because it, it doesn't fill you on everything, but it, it gives you a few key points to to yeah. remember. The first two for me were it was a lot of of setup for the season. I don't want to say like nothing happened, but it was yeah. like it took the time to kind of put things in place. Even the third episode, to a degree, it felt like. And I'm glad they're dropping. I mean, they they always do, but I'm glad they're dropping all three at once because mm -hmm. it does feel like those three are very bingeable as their own kind of contained setup for the rest of the season. Because once we get into episodes four and five, um, it really starts moving. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, episode three, Homelander. Uh, Homelander has a speech with the new the new members. Sister Sage and Firecracker join the team. His ego is for the first time he acknowledges someone else. Um, Sister Sage in this in this case uh, as smarter than him, but he still says, "I'm I'm I'm like I'm I'm close." Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I'm, 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 I'm shocked that he, um, really jumped on the sister Sage bandwagon so quickly and allowed her to have as much freedom, uh, as he did really early on. Um, he really took her in, accepted her and said, uh, you, you know, I'm, I, I'm going to run with, with your ideas, which, which is kind of shocking to me. I didn't, I, I wasn't expecting that. What about you? No, not at all. Like he's always kind of been making his own, a lot of the time, very impulsive decisions. So it's interesting watching him take somebody else's lead mm -hmm. voluntarily too. Like it was, it was his idea to bring this, this person in and he wants, like he wants her to lay the groundwork and give him kind of a plan uh, for his, you know, ascension to power that he wants. And he wants to leave this world for his son. That's like an, a, his idea of like an ideal place. Yeah. Yeah. Does it happen right away that he uh, makes her CEO and, and, and kicks um, Ashley out? It's pretty early into the episode. Yeah. He, he like, I think it's in that meeting that he says, She's the new CEO. Ashley, you're just like, and she's like, what do I do? And you're just, it's basically uh, just a, a mascot. Face yeah. Like a, she is, she's, she's like, so I'm a mascot. That's basically yeah. what she is. She, she's the public facing side of this, but yeah. all the strings are being pulled um, behind the scenes. Yeah. Huey tries to get a lawyer to look at his, uh, the DNR for his dad. It's a good storyline for, for Huey bringing the mom in. It does take him away from the main story though. Uh, for the first few episodes what do you it think? does but without without spoiling anything like where that story ends up going and and his you know the dynamic he has with his you know his estranged mother i think it's kind of a it's a good idea for his character mm -hmm. that ties back into like some of the decisions that he's made in in past seasons as well yeah yeah i think it's also good that some characters gets those get those side stories as opposed to every character just being attached to the main story, because even like uh, Kamiko's story is just very vague. Um, at first, with that with that with that new character that's introduced that has a backstory with her. Yeah, um, her going after the members of the what are they called, like the Shining Light. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I think it is interesting that you've got these characters branching off, and like, yeah, I'm okay with them sidelining Huey for a little bit because it gives these other characters that have been sidelined in the past more of a chance to shine this season. Huey's been kind of the, ma the main character, one of the main characters for the last three seasons. So it's interesting to see others kind of step into that spotlight and explore other stories. And I think that's a good mm -hmm. way to, you know, keep the longevity of the show. Like now that they're planning to go longer than five seasons, I know five was originally their, their plan. It was five and done. But now uh, the showrunner said that they have plans to keep it going. So I think this is how you do that without having it get stale. Yeah. 
on, on that note, uh, er, er, this has happened to Eric Kripke before with Supernatural. <laughs> Which uh, went on for like how many seasons? Like 12? How, how many seasons did Supernatural run? It went on for 15 seasons. Oh my God. Yeah, that's a long <laughs> he, he He was out after season five. He wrote, he said, I wrote five seasons. I finished my story arc and I'm out. And he left. He left the show and the show went on for 10 more seasons after him. But he said he wrote the series. He wrote the show that he penned when he went approached the CW for the show. He wrote five seasons and he did all five seasons. Now the same thing is happening to him here uh, at the boys where uh, I think it was announced like two years ago that he had five seasons planned. And it looks like I I have a feeling he's going to leave again. I don't know if he's going to stay. I just, I'm I'm torn because I, like I, I I love this show. It's become one of my favorite shows. I don't want too much of a good thing where it it takes a drop in quality. Mm -hmm. Like I get excited when a show, when a show is like four or five seasons and they, they know when to call it quits and they go out on top. Like those are some of the best shows out there. You look at like, you know, Breaking Bad and the Sopranos ran, ran like five or six seasons and then they, they knew that, okay, that's it. And then you've got these other shows out there, like things like Dexter that just went on for like eight seasons and it had a reboot and it's like, it, it took a dive in quality after the first five. So I, I'm not saying that will happen with the boys. I think like, especially because you've got the, you know, the source material, there's lots of different stories they can explore. You've got, Lots of different angles they can take, but I just don't want to see it go downhill because the quality has been very consistent these last, you know, four seasons. Mother's Milk pitches to flip a train, um, so it happens very quickly that you know he he thinks you know a train is able to be flipped to his side after giving the recording, um, and so he meets with he meets with a train. I think it's an interesting angle that you've got somebody that's been part of the seven and on the inside since the beginning and hasn't been like a, a good person was like it's the, the a train's been kind of a villain but you you see him taking that turn now and uh yeah no i'm enjoying it so far butcher butcher uh is able to talk to ryan because butcher so butcher butcher storyline is that he wants to help ryan and no one else wants to uh that's the storyline that he's running with right now um you know, his ex-wife told him to protect Ryan. So uh, he's seeing that as his major mission right now, especially considering that he only has a, a limited time. Uh, I laughed at the scene where in this episode where he, in order to get to Ryan, he talks to him over like the PlayStation Network. Oh, they're, yeah, they're playing that. Uh, that's the seven, basically like Mortal, their, their version of Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so he does, he does uh, manage to get Ryan to his house. Um, to meet he bakes a batch of cookies that were laced uh most likely poisoned he wanted to poison him well, yeah they were gonna they were gonna basically try and drug him and kidnap him and then brainwash him into basically wanting to get away from homelander yeah but yeah. he does he does take a turn they're having their conversation and it's a nice heart to heart scene and then he, he obviously decides against that and yeah dumps the cookies out I like that too. I like that, you know, I, you see him dump out the cookies and I'm like, oh, are they going to have like Ryan question that? Cause that'd be a weird thing to do. And then yeah. Ryan does. He's like, why'd you do that? He's like, ah, fucked him up. I had way <laughs> too much sugar. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I butchers, butcher story. I like, I like his story arc. I like where it's going. Um, I like that, you know, when, when he's the series first started, he had absolutely no remorse for any soup. It didn't matter who it was. Uh, but you know, as this, as the series has gone on, he has uh, gained a soft spot for superheroes, and uh, especially you know his his stepson being one. He has no like now he's in a position where now it's family. Um, so this storyline for Butcher this season is definitely putting a wrench in in his plans of getting rid of all soups. And the seven finds out that Starlight has the footage because the guys who were arrested for the potential murder of those three uh the the three uh, uh protesters were released from prison because, because yeah because footage. they showed them the footage yeah yeah uh so now at this point they know that there is a potential leak in Vought and somewhere either within the team or within the building within the company 
and uh, Homelander desperately wants to find this person and gets A Train uh, really, uh, really shaking in his boots. Oh man, the one scene where they're interrogating, I, I can't remember who it is, but it's some it's some woman, some poor woman that works at Vought. And they're like, oh, did you help? Like, did you help? And she says like two words, she's like, oh, he just wanted, and then just lays her through the face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you got Sister Sage, like, do you not think it would have been helpful to let her finish her sentence? Man, hold yeah, on just like, is, and that's what makes him such a great villain is like, he's so, he's so menacing and he's so scary. So it's, it's the impulsivity yeah. of doing stuff like that on such a whim without thinking, without any remorse. Yeah. The deep with, uh, I don't remember the name of his squid. Um, oh, they're having their little marital, marital <laughs> issues. Like you, you haven't cleaned my tank. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, uh the, this relationship uh it's so it's so funny did uh was it the second or third episode where uh the deep and sister sage hook up and it was one of them was it the second or, or maybe it was it, the it third? Was... okay oh, yeah ep- episode three i wrote sister sage and the deep hook up <laughs> yeah uh, and you that... kind of see you find out more about why that happens later but you see you know she's sitting there and she's she's kind of acting not like herself and you yeah. guys she's like do you want to watch do you want to watch transformers too <laughs> yeah i and didn't like, i oh, didn't like, get why, that like, and then the camera not, like, pans she's... the camera pans to the table and you see this metal object with blood on it so i had no idea what the heck was going on um no i thought i thought like did i miss something you see this and it's like why is she acting like this what is this metal thing like is she like dosing herself with something uh we do find out about that afterwards though. yeah and this is one of the things about the show that just leaves you with so much intrigue the way this episode the way the things are written um make you just really interested and curious so just really well written scene um in that in that that scene there well yeah it's like really well, well constructed because it's just like the two of them like they're hanging out they're having like have a short conversation they're eating a, a blooming onion from outback <laughs> and and then you see this thing on the table and like the, the show doesn't feel the need to answer that right away. Like, and they're going to make viewers wait a week to, to find out like what that's all about. And it's like, it's not like it's a major cliffhanger, but it sets up these kind of little tidbits. It's like, Oh, I want, I, what is that? What does that mean? What is going on right now? Yeah. And they have those constantly throughout each episode, little, little setup, little setup. That, yeah. Yeah. There's another big, big scene that happens. The big action sequence from this episode is the, <laughs> it's so funny. The, uh, the ice performance. Uh, oh my God. The, uh, the, se- the seven on ice. I can't this, remember what it is. It's like a Christmas musical. Like it's basically yeah. Disney on ice. Disney on ice. Uh, but yeah, Christmas, uh, make, put Christ in Christmas. Yeah. Put the Christ back. In, I, it's been in my head. It's been in my head. I rewatched, I skimmed the episode today and I watched that scene again. And it's just, it's been stuck in my head. It's, it's really catchy. Yeah. I love, I actually, one of the things that I've really been enjoying about this season is how Maeve is still such a marketable character, even after she's gone. Oh yeah. Like she's one of the, like one of the characters in the ice performance. Yeah. She's still part of the, like part of this musical. Yeah. Uh, I, it's, it's set up like, um, I guess it's just like a practice run. Um, they're it doing a practice. Newman, Newman yeah. shows up with her daughter That's to right. introduce her to the cast and, and kind of see what's going on. And then yeah, got an unfortunate mishap where well, Huey's in the vents and Homelander's trying to laser him and accidentally slices. What is it? May, yeah, I think it's Maeve that gets sliced in half. I can't believe that Huey. Yeah, Huey's little uh, sweat droplet uh, falls from the vent. Uh, yeah. And then it, it gets even worse when Jesus starts slicing people. Oh, he slices the, the fingers <laughs> off with the skin. It's funny because Homelander, the only thing Homelander does there, the only destruction he causes, is he cuts the, the, the Maeve performer in half. But then there, there's so much other carnage and bloodshed, but it's all just all the performers trying to escape and climb over each other and like you're getting like neck split and like fingers cut off. And it's just like the show does that very well they find a way to make these like very over the top violent scenes really funny and it was yeah. like it was just 
hilarious. Yeah. Huey's in real danger in this scene because he's yeah. now being chased by Homelander. Obviously, you're not going to be able to outrun him. He's he vis- he's he's blasting he vision everywhere. Uh, but he, he gets saved by A Train in this scene. So A Train comes to the rescue. Um, you know, his powers are always useful with exiting uh dangerous situations, and it comes in handy finally for the boys. Uh, to get out of this dangerous situation because it's only Huey and Mother's Milk and like no one else. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think they, they obviously weren't expecting Homelander to show up. They were, they thought it was just going to be Newman. Um, So yeah, um, glad a train came there. Um, So now we can see that a train is finally, you know, really helping them out. Um, He is not only a, a, you know, a valuable informant, but, assisting on missions whenever needed yeah he's, i mean he saved Huey's life um he's fully like and he's risking his own life by by doing this every time he helps them he puts himself at, at bigger risk of being found out yeah exactly uh we also got a really another really fun action scene in this episode too uh where kamiko and frenchy go um to a warehouse and they're investigating the uh the shining light group that's and right Frenchie takes some some sort of drug some sort of hallucinogenic and he's tripping and kamiko is just slaughtering everybody but the way he's seeing it is you've got all these floating like boats and rubber ducks and like bubbles coming out of people and i love the way they cut between like what's actually happening you see how like gory and violent it is and then when you his point of view and you've just got like all these like cartoonish like 3d things floating and flying around and music going yeah, that was a really fun action yeah. sequence, the way they did it. Uh, uh, Frenchie is obviously not handling um, not handling things well with um, his his things that he's done in the past are starting to haunt him. Yes. Um, especially with Colin at this point. Uh, he, I believe at this point, he's discovered that uh, he was responsible for uh, Colin's Please? parent. Yeah. Yeah. Like his whole family's death. His whole family. Yeah. Yeah, so this is really bothering him and haunting him, and um, he's not handling things well, and he's relapsed. And uh, I don't remember what he took, but he's obviously on some hallucinogen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, really fun action sequence, and he leaves Kamiko alone um, to take basically every hit, and Kamiko's out to you know fighting like ten people at this point by herself. Um, but you know she's she's the Kamiko's the Mary Sue in the show. She can just take any damage uh, and she'll just re- re- revive. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think. Hmm. Uh, I think the episode ends. I don't know if it ends with Homelander. Uh, Ryan comes back and then he asks. Homelander asks Ryan where has he been and he knows that he's on he went to butcher because he said I can I can smell him oh I can smell him on you yeah <laughs> um he tells him yeah he tells him to go home and I don't remember what else happens after that I think that's I think that's where the episode ends pretty much it. like it like I said yeah these first three work really well as kind of putting putting things in place for the rest of the season yeah definitely yeah and i think like for me like obviously you've 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 watched you said you've watched the full season now right I've, at this point i've yeah i've watched the full okay. season yes <laughs> yeah. and i've seen i've seen the first five so like things do like when we get into episode four and especially in episode five things really start to hit the ground running so yeah. i like that the first three not that they like kind of reset like you've got a lot of shows when they come back for a new season they kind of reset and they take a while to find their groove again i wouldn't say this one for as far as doing that but it it felt like it was you know really doing some work to kind of lay the groundwork for the rest of the season it it, it did it, it definitely needed to to lay some groundwork uh it taking place six months after season three you have two a two-year gap in between you have a new show being introduced uh, with gen v uh a lot of characters uh, a lot of character flipping from last season you know with uh especially with the seven you have Ryan becoming a more of a a, a prominent character, uh, Maeve and and uh, Black Noir um, changing f- in the team. Uh, so you're reintroducing 
uh, you know, new characters, new seven members, um, characters that are flipping sides. So there's a lot happening, right? Uh, the CIA uh, is becoming more, you know, a more recurring characters now. Um, you have Robert Singer, uh, the president, uh, Victoria Newman uh, becoming more, you know, and they're in every episode at this point. So there's just uh, a Kessler, you know, on Butcher's side. There is just, there are so many characters to that they needed to reintroduce and uh, where the characters are at this point, six months later, um, they needed a, to set all that groundwork in. Um, and I agree that, you know, these first three episodes do work really well together to set all that up. Um, and episode four, five, six is just where everything just really, um, really kind of, you know, yeah, goes haywire. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, I think that's it for episode one, two, and three. And, uh, we will see you guys back for episode four.